Russia, we gonna take it down. also known as the First Bad Girls, is a multi-platinum girl group consisting of Kima Rayner, Keisha Spivy, and Pamela Long. The trio hailed from Plainfield, New Jersey, like other upcoming artists, Lauren Hill, Naughty by Nature, and their label mate, Faith Evans. Their group name started as Total Opposites, but then eventually changed to Total due to Diddy. It was Total Opposites at first because we're all three, we're totally Three different young women. Right. Well, before you go any further, break it down. Though. What makes you so different? What's different about her? What's different about I you? I let her break it down. Right, yeah. Our attitudes, our kitchen. background, our style, our vibe, and our sound. Just everything. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> That's total. You got the total package. Well, give me your side of the package. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm like that laid back right. on the DL. True. Quiet. Quiet. Yeah. Speak when necessary. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What about Pam? Since you're not here, we got to represent her, you know? That's Pam the... is just hardcore. <laughs> Going that's, all out. That's the one with all the funk. Unlike other groups during this time, the girls were already a group before they met with their record label. In an interview with Essence, Kima and Keisha speak about the time when the group formed to become Total. There was history before meeting Sean Combs. I remember Keisha. We weren't friends at the time, but I remember her. She heard me singing Mariah Carey in a car one time and said, let's start a group. So she saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. She gave me that confidence and encouragement. With the help of their producer, they were introduced to Pam, who would become the last and final member of Total. When the girls met, Keisha didn't think Pam would fit, but eventually she ate her own words because her voice was perfect for the group. And even Pam didn't want to join because she wanted to be her own solo artist and she thought Kima was bougie. She eventually agreed to being a part of Total. Within a year later, they were introduced to Diddy through Kathy Dukes, which was the mother of Diddy's godson and their manager. We happened to uh, bump into a personal friend of Puffy. Well, not bump into the guys that we were working with from the Bronx. They kept our number, and everybody, you know, still kept it cool and everything, and they called us and said, well, if you're looking for management, if you're still trying to sing, I have somebody that's, you know, that he from she Mount Vernon and she grew up with, company. you know, Heavy D and Pete Rock Seal Smooth, and she, you know, it's probably a good connection. Right. And um, we started going out and working with her and meeting different people. She had us jumping out of vans and <laughs> doing everything. Blowing up the spot yeah, on Bismarck. Blowing up the spot. Right, right. You know, just right. singing and just letting it be real and letting people say, you know, see that we're not scared. This is what we really want. Yeah. Paying our dues, basically. And um, she took us up to Puffy. One night he was in the studio. And we sang a telephone. Yeah, we reached, in the elevator, right? Something like that. We made up the song so, in the car. Like within the time <laughs> yeah. you pulled up from the, you know, the studio, she was like, "You get ready to go up here." Made up in the right after Diddy heard their incredible voices at the Hit Factory recording studio, their careers took off. And with this, Total, B.I.G., and Craig Mack were the first artists that were signed to Bad Boy. The trio's big first song was Biggie Smalls' "Juicy." where they sung the hook and did the backup vocals. During the making of Juicy, Pam wasn't in the studio, which meant she had to be left out of the song, but she still appeared in the video. Pam shares her own personal memories when Biggie was alive. Pam tells Essence Magazine, when I think about Big, I think about Boston Market, because that was his favorite restaurant. Sometimes he would come to New Jersey to visit me and my mom, and we always go to Boston Market. Biggie was more than a label mate. He was our brother. The trio's next hits would go on to be Biggie's One More Chance, the hip hop remix, and Can't You See, which peaked at number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100, as well as number two on the R&B chart, and was included on the New Jersey Drive soundtrack. During this time between 1994 and 1995, they were also working on their debut self-titled album, Total. While working on the album, the members cameoed in a few videos. 
Keisha sang a part in Craig Mack's Flavor in Your Ear remix in 1994. And the group had a small part in So For Real's Every Little Thing I Do in 1995. And although while the hype of the album still rang, they didn't let the backlash of the East Coast versus West Coast beef get between their dreams. First of all, I'd like to thank God. Second of all, I'd like to thank my whole entire Defo family on both sides, you know what I'm saying? I'd like to tell Tupac to keep his guards up. We ride with him. And one other thing I'd like to say, any artist out there who want to be an artist and want to stay a star and don't want to, don't want to have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the video, all on the record, dancing, come to death row. Their album, then released in 1996, went platinum and hit number 23 on the U.S. Billboard 200 charts with hits from No One Else featuring The Brat, Kissing You, and Can't You See. They also guest appeared in a music video, Not Tonight, The Ladies Night Remix, which became a hit in the U.S., peaking at number 6 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, and Missy Elliott's The Rain, Super Super Fly, in 1997 but they wouldn't have had their major success without the help of songwriter terry robinson and their stylist sybil Penix. sybil had a vision for us pam remembers she knew our personality so well because we spent so much time with her that black leather look on the first album cover that was all sybil after their first album they then went to work on singles with other stars such as l o cool j's Lounging, Who Do You Love, Foxy Brown's I Can't, and Mace What You Want. One thing that can be said is that Diddy made sure all of their label mates worked together because Pam even featured on Biggie's Hypnotize, which hit the Billboard Hot 100 charts at number two. In 1997, their song with Missy Elliott, What About Us, was a lead single for the soundtrack of Soul Food, and it peaked at number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number four on Billboard Hot R&B. Scoring them their fifth top 10 hit single on the R&B chart and their fourth gold certification. Their follow-up album, Kima, Keisha, and Pam, debuted to strong reviews, sales, and was certified gold by RIAA. Although it didn't hit platinum like their last album, it was still a top favorite with songs like Trippin' featuring Missy Elliott, I Tried, and Sitting Home. They also featured on the Why Do Fools Fall In Love soundtrack in 1998 with the song What The Dealio featuring Missy Elliott. Why do you think that only gold and not platinum again? You know what? Because we didn't push it. Um, when you say we didn't push it, are you saying the label didn't push it? No. It or are you saying you didn't? You know what? It wasn't so much as the label. It's because we had so much, by then, it was so much, I told you that, in the turmoil that was going on, it started to spill over. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, yo, it was so, we were so lax. And it was just like, it came to a pause. 1999, I will never forget it. It came to, everything came to a pause on that second album. And it was like, yo, for a minute, I told you, I was looking in the mirror. I'm just like, yo, who is this chick? And I'm going, I mean, going through it, I'm just like, I cannot even I see myself, but who who am I? And that's what it had came to for me. So it was just like my life took a pause. And in the midst of that pause, I thank God for it because it had me call out to the only person that I knew that can help me, and that was God. I was like, I was like, yo, I went to my brother, I was like, yo, this is it for me. I was like, I'm giving my life to the Lord. I said, I can't do it anymore. I said, I cannot do this no more. Because that's how hard I was running. I was running. You know what I mean? It, it had nothing to do with anybody else. It was just me. Yeah. And so with that, it was just like we didn't have time to promote because it was so much bickering going on. It was to a point where Kim was just like, yo, I don't even want to be in the group no more. So it was just like it wasn't because of it wasn't because of Kima wanting to lose just walk out on the group. It was more or less I told you that's that what was going on with me was spilling. I can't speak for everybody else, but I know me and right. what was going on with me. I was a mess. And it became so messy. Though. Yeah, it was, it was messy because Kima was just like, yo, like, like I can't deal with this. Yeah, you guys are teenagers. Mm -hmm. She's so. like, I can't deal with this no more. Diddy decided to take a back seat and allow Missy Elliott to handle the girls. She even had a big part in helping them create their second album. But unfortunately, Diddy wasn't feeling it. 
In 2005, while promoting her album, The Cookbook, Elliot told Pam, I was in the studio for like 22 hours at times, squirting visine in my eyes, trying to create the best material possible for that project. But it was a mess because Puffy just came into the studio telling me how whack I was and that I didn't know anything about music. Me and the girls loved the sound and we knew it was only a matter of time before he loved it too. Pam told Ebony, Puff wasn't feeling a lot of what Missy was doing, but we wanted that sound. Puff didn't think it would hit, but when that thing crunked up and radio got a hold of it, when it hit, it hit. After the release of their second album, Total started to slow down with their song making and featuring other people's songs. Pam featured in a song with MC Light and Missy Elliott called Too Fly in 1998. Foxy Brown's I Can't in 1999. Mace's Stay Out of My Way in 1999, Gang Stars Discipline, which was co-written by Total, Little C's Dolly Baby that had Pam sample vocals in the union She Loves Me. And after their last album release, they realized that the fame was beginning to impact their personal lives, which caused the groups to go their separate ways. For now. Pam said, we just got tired and decided to disband. We need to find ourselves. Kima also opened up about her own reality change during the group's hiatus. Some people assume that because you have an opportunity to do this or that, that there won't be any downs to the ups. But that's just not how it is. You think because I have a record deal with Puffy, I don't have the same struggles you have. But I've always looked at the industry as like, yeah, I got a record deal, but it is just like borrowing money from a bank. You gotta pay it back. At the end of the day, it's a job. You get out what you put in. To elaborate on my journey, I went to school. I have a nine to five. I work a regular job. Although I love Total, at some point, I still had to feel good about me and feel like I was accomplishing something. Everybody's walk is not everybody's walk. The trio's last song together would be their feature on the Tony Touch single, I Wonder Why, He's the Greatest DJ. They also contributed to the songs Crave, to Three Strikes, and the song Quick Rush to the Bait Movie soundtrack. The three then went to work on different projects. Pam worked with Trina on Take Me in 2000, and Keisha and Pam did Oh No with DJ Utaka in 2001. Since the early 2000s, we really haven't seen much of Total. However, they did make a comeback in 2016 for the Bad Boy reunion tour. Want to know what they are up to now? Keisha is married to her husband of almost 12 years, actor Omar Epps, and the two have been an item since 1999. The couple have two children together, Amir and Kamari May. Omar also has an older daughter, Ayana Yasmin. For now, Keisha has been pretty quiet on her social media and seems to be enjoying being a mother and a wife. But she has been talking about acting, so we may be seeing Keisha on the big screen soon. As for Kima, she is married as well to her husband Carlos of 22 years and has a daughter and son, Kima Marie and Christian. Kima is still doing music and released a single called Love Me Back, which is available on all streaming sites. And for Pam, she is currently living her best single life with no children and seems to be doing a lot of community outreach. Last year in March, she dropped the song with her and another artist, Breezy. And she has a radio show called Pam's World on BKS1. Although the group total have went their separate ways, their creative outfits, soulful vocals, and relatable songs will always be remembered. Want to keep up with Pam, Kima, and Keisha? Follow their social medias in the description box below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop a video suggestion. 
And as always, stay nostalgic.